So in this tutorial, we're gonna look at something that's super useful, is how we can control what items are actually displayed inside the list view. So oftentimes we don't wanna show everything, we want to show items uh, based on certain criteria. Right now we'll look at a pretty complex example. Your example may not be as complex as this, but it's good because you can uh, mix and match different tables inside your database to determine what items need to be shown. So the high level overview is that we're creating, in my case, I'm creating a custom list view. So the list view format is going to be the name of the module followed by the word view followed by the actual uh, name of the view. We're extending the list view in our case. In your case, uh, you need to research how to extend the views. If your view is not a custom list, like view list as in my case, you would be extending your module's original uh, list view. But in my case, it's just the default uh, view list that we're extending. Once it's extended, what you'll need to do is have the following piece of code, which is which overrides the list view process method. So my fairly complicated example, what I'm doing is I'm uh, uh, doing a join of several tables to show only items that are related to a specific set of records. And these are the things that you can customize. So this parameter is custom from, custom where, custom select, custom order by. And in my case, I'm using the custom from and custom where to do left outer joins on tables. So essentially what this is here is just the building up of the this params property. Once this is built up, I'm going to um, run the setup method and I'm going to include my this params property that I just built up above. When you're building your query, the, the, the easiest thing to do is just to read the sweet uh, CRM log and inside the log you'll see the actual query that is being executed and that is potentially failing. Like that, you can take a look at it, you can see where you went uh, wrong, what, what's wrong basically with your query, and then you can adjust it uh, accordingly. But this is one example which is like, as I said, fairly complicated. In your case, it may be a lot simpler. So in this case, since we're dealing with a custom list view, what I needed to do is I also needed to register this custom list view. So in your case, if that's what you're doing, if you're dealing with a custom list view, uh, you would go to your controller and you can see the, the name of my list view is uh, show project unit list, units list. So uh, I went to the controller and then I registered it like so. I did public function action underscore followed by the name of my custom list view. And then I did view uh, equals the name of the view. So if you're dealing with a custom list view, as in my case, you would need to do that. If you're dealing with a custom, like with a default list view, you, you don't need to register the default list view. It's there by default. So when we do repair and rebuild and we refresh the page, it's only going to show me the items which correspond to the query which we built with you earlier, meaning the query here that does a number of joins. If you found the video at all helpful or have any questions, please let me know and subscribe because I'll be making more of these in the future. Thank you.